Um, so what is the cause of uh, depression here? And uh, again, uh, we don't have any uh, real good idea of it because it's complex, but there, there are again things which point in the direction of uh, different uh, possibilities. Uh, there is the so-called monoamine uh, hypothesis, which was or is basically uh, coming from the observation that a drug like resapine depletes catecholamines and produces very heavy depression in almost all subjects who receive the drug. Uh, so in some way, uh, the monoamines which are being released from these different uh, nuclei in the brainstem and basically bathing uh, most of the brain in monoaminergic uh, neurotransmitters uh, seem somehow to be involved in it. At least you can create um, uh, depression through these uh, uh, removal of, of the catecholamines. Uh, it's known that the monoamine oxidase inhibitors are effective antidepressants. So if you make sure to increase the catecholamine Minergic level, you can actually treat uh, some of the depressions. Uh, serotonin reuptake blockers, that's uh, Lugopila, uh, are also effective antidepressants. So, by increasing the serotonergic uh, level, you can uh, have an effect on uh, depression. The problem then is this um, that if you take one of the serotonin reuptake blockers, it works immediately within an hour. Uh, you see that your level of serotonin goes up, but it has absolutely no effect on your mood. That effect only comes after three to four weeks of using these pills. So it's not directly related to the level of serotonin as such, but interfering with the level of serotonin over time changes something in your brain so that your depression goes away. Another observation is that uh, cocaine is probably one of the most efficient ways of raising the catecholamine level, including the serotonin level, and it has absolutely no effect on depression. Uh, so there's something which doesn't really fit here. Uh, so the serotonin hypothesis as such has been abandoned and we don't believe anymore that it has to do with serotonin as such, even though that's still uh, what is popularly thought. But serotonin is not a mood uh, neurotransmitter as such. Uh, but there is some effect which relates to serotonin, which is uh, unclear. So what is then all of this about? Um, First of all, th this is uh, the most uh, commonly used hypothesis about how, how depression uh, develops. But again, we, we don't really know. First of all, it is known that there is a strong genetic linkage. So depression runs in families. It's not like it's one gene. It's probably several genes which are involved. And we don't really know uh, which genes at the present time. but there are several genes which contribute to it. One of those genes has to do with uh, receptors that are involved in serotonin. Uh, it has been demonstrated now from work across the street from Biswas Patel uh, that uh, some of these genes which code for the serotonin receptors uh, that people here towards the northern hemisphere tend to have uh, actually a very efficient uh, version of that gene which makes us extra responsive to uh, serotonin which is a good thing living towards the north because it's actually related quite nicely to light sensitivity and the frequency of winter depressions. Uh, so people coming from the southern part of Europe and moving up here become much more depressed during the winter time than we do uh, so it seems as if we have adapted uh, to living uh, with very little light during the winter by having this receptor which is more sensitive uh, to the influence of light. Uh, 
Whether there is a hyperactive HPA system is still a matter of debate. Uh, there are conflicting reports, uh, so uh, it's not really clear that uh, there is more cortisol, more adrenaline when you're depressed. It doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, so it's not really because it's a hyperactive uh, HPA system, as is the case in anxiety disorders. Uh, so the problem seems to be somewhere else. There seems to be a change in uh, the glucocorticoid, the cortisol receptors in the hippocampus. So they seem to be less sensitive to cortisol. It could be due to sort of uh, too high levels of cortisol for some time so that it's been uh, reduced. Uh, but at least uh, cortisol doesn't seem to have the same kind of uh, effect uh, on uh, the hippocampus uh, as it does in uh, healthy subjects. Uh, what has been demonstrated in uh, young rats uh, being uh, rat with uh, more or less uh, sensory stimulation with enriched environment is that the enriched environment leads to increased serotonin and increased glucocorticoid receptors and therefore also better response to stressors which sort of counteracts some of these things. So there seems also to be some evidence of an environmental influence during childhood especially that if you are reared under conditions, at least if you're a rat, where you have a lot of sensory stimulation and you sort of learn how to cope in an enriched environment, uh, then it seems to uh, at least diminish your risk of uh, developing uh, depression later on. Um, so th this is all very good, but I think coming back to the slide that I showed before, I, th I think there are some interesting things here in which is new and which is not in your book yet because it has only been found within recent years, uh, which is basically an, kind of an explanation for this. It turns out that people who are depressed have lower levels of brain-derived neurotrophic factor than healthy subjects. BDNF turns out also to be stimulated by serotonin and it is reduced by high levels of cortisol. And it turns out that when you give the antidepressants, and especially the serotonin reuptake blockers, so that you increase the level of serotonin, you increase the level of BDNF. And that increase comes after three to four weeks and coincides nicely with the time where depression disappears. And it also coincides nicely with the time where you see these effects by the antidepressant drugs on the neurogenesis in uh, the hippocampus. So maybe what is happening is that you sort of restore structurally the response in the hippocampus to this influence of cortisol so that your brain becomes more resistant to the effect of ongoing cortisol levels by having serotonin increasing BDNF, making those structural changes so that the response and the receptors available uh, are upgraded. Uh, so it's now being interpreted as plastic changes in the brain which are happening in relation to first serotonin uh, increase, then BDNF increase, and then all of these structural changes. Uh, so the other way around, depression is maybe a maladaptive uh, plastic change in your brain uh, which leads to the opposite effects uh, in this circuitry. Uh, so, but this, this is really an ongoing uh, uh, research area. But we should mention also in relation to that, that exercise increases the level of serotonin, the level of BDNF if you do it over time and it has a good effect on depression almost as big as these uh, serotonin reuptake blockers.